Hello, in this video we're going to find the MLE of normal distributions and the first two cases are I'm guessing are pretty textbook you can probably find them in any textbook but the third case where we're going to look at a mixture of two normal distributions is probably not you know as textbook as the first two and you'll see what I'm saying when we get there so the first case we're going to let x be a normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared. And we're going to assume that we know the variance. Uh, the distribution or the density for one is this. And then the joint distribution is the product of the marginals, which becomes this. Now the likelihood is it's essentially this, but you think about the the parameters mu and variance being random and x is fixed where you where in the um, joint density you know it's the other way around the x's are random so then you take the log of the likelihood and you and you get this distribution here now notice that I'm I'm lumping this with this first one because it's a constant and so we don't really um, it doesn't play a part. We don't want to maximize this likelihood in terms of sigma squared because it's known. So then when the log of this, of course the E and the log cancel and we're left with just this. Now when we take the uh, derivative or the partial with respect to mu, then this is constant so it goes to zero and we're left you know, with this. And so this is a constant out front. The derivative passes in. It's two you know, the decrease the exponent by one, take the derivative with in here, which is minus one, we set it equal to zero. And now we need to solve for mu. Well, these are constants, so they, you can just take them to the other side. This is constant, you can take it to the other side. The two is constant, or you know, you can even cancel with that. And then we're left with this here. Now, when we distribute this sum in, you know, we get the sum of the xi's and then it's minus the sum of this constant. So you get n of them and then you take it through the other side and you end up with this. Now to solve for mu, you divide by n, which ends up being the sample mean. And so this is the MLE in the normal uh, case where the variance is known. Now, in the second case, let's assume that both mu and sigma squared are unknown. Now, then we want it, uh, the, well, let's, I'm going to go back up here. The joint density is just the same as this one. But one, when we take the log of it, we're going to have to keep that sigma squared by itself. And that's what we do here. So when we take the log of the likelihood, you know this is sort of the constants out front and then we this is a sigma squared and and since it's raised to the n minus n over two you can take it out front and then we're left with this piece so we want to take the derivative of it or the partial of this log likelihood with respect to mu and uh, we get this and it ends up being the same as what we did before. Set it to zero and you get mu is x bar. And that's the sample mean. Now let's take the partial of the log likelihood with respect to sigma squared. And you get this. So remember it's the we had the minus n over 2 log of sigma squared. So it's 1 over and then times the derivative and you get this. And this is uh it's you know it's minus one over two sigma squared but when you take this up and you know take the derivative you end up with this now we set it equal to zero and and then we solve but and the first thing i like to do here is multiply everything by sigma to the fourth and then uh, we get a cancellation here, you know, that's zero, and then we get sigma squared in the numerator, which is this. Now to solve for, for this, well, the two, we can multiply everything by two and cancel, and then take the n sigma squared to the other side, and then, and then divide by n, and we get this. And so this is the 
MLE of the uh, sample variance. And so that should be squared. And so these are pr the pretty textbook examples. Now the third one, we're going to let um, X, well, let's, let's, we're going to let X be either Y1 or Y2 with equal probability, where Y1 is a standard normal density and Y2 is a normal mean mu and variance sigma squared. So, and since the goal of this video is to show the MLE, we're not going to show how to drive it. But in this case, it's a pretty easy one. It's just, it's the addition of these two densities, but times one half in, in front of each of them. And then this is the new density for X. So this would be XI, the density for one observation is this sum here. Now, I'm going to go through a couple notes before we take the, the joint distribution or the likelihood of a sample size in. Let's look at the properties of this by itself. And so we think of th this as uh, the likelihood function. So it's really a function of mu and sigma squared when the data are fixed. You know, they're really the same, but you just think about them differently. So now um, we're going to fix mu and we're going to let sigma go to infinity. So let the variance go to infinity and, and of this function and it equals this, which is this first piece. And if you look at it over here, if you let sigma go to infinity, this goes to zero. This goes to zero and e to the zero is one. And so this goes to zero, which, and there's no sigma or mu here. So we're just left with that. Um, now let's let, um, let's fix mu, um, but don't let it be the xi. So it's some other value than this xi. And we're going to let sigma go to zero. And it ends up being this, which is this first part here. And if you look at this here, um, if you let sigma go to zero, then this actually goes to infinity. And when sigma goes to zero, this goes to minus infinity, which goes to, um, which goes to zero. And so this goes to zero at a faster rate than this goes to infinity, which then the whole thing goes to zero, which leaves this when that's the first part. Now the next part is interesting. If we let mu be xi, so in this case, mu is xi, so this is zero, and zero times this is zero, and we get one. Um, yeah, e to the zero is one, so this piece drops off. And then if we let sigma go to zero, well, this, we get this part, but then this goes to infinity. And so the whole thing is infinity. So those are a couple properties before we jump in. Now let's look at the likelihood of a sample size n. And it ends up being the product of these marginals because they're independent observations. So it's a product of all these, you know, marginal densities. And that's the joint likely hood function. So now if we let mu be one of the x's, say i, and we just picked i, could be one, two, three, etc. <coughs> then this likelihood goes to zero. I mean goes to infinity. Okay? Because we just showed um, that if mu is the data point and sigma square and sigma goes to zero, this goes to infinity. Now we have to see what the rest of these do, but the other terms in terms are finite, and that's because of um, what we showed on this back page. So if 
if mu is not xi and sigma goes to zero, then we're left with this finite value here. Okay. And so since this is a continuous distribution, those none of the data points should be equal. They're with probability zero. So all of them are, are finite numbers except for one infinity. And then that product goes to infinity. Okay. Um, well, why, why is that important? Well, it tells you that um, to maximize the likelihood, infinity is as, as big as we can get. So the n tuples are MLE. So this, if we let x, or we let uh, x1 be an estimate of mu, and zero be an estimate of sigma squared, then that makes the likelihood go to infinity. And that's as big as you can get. And so that's one of the MLEs. As a matter of fact, if you let the estimate for mu be any data point, say xn or xi, and sigma be zero, that is also infinity. So that's an MLE. So there's n MLEs in this case, and they all don't make sense. You know, you can't have a variance of zero for a normal distribution, you know. Well, it, yeah, because if, if the variance is zero, then they're all concentrated at one point. And if you said that mu is n, but now we have other points, so it says that that this one point is from the distribution with you know mu and sigma squared and, and all the others are from the uh, standard normal distribution which we know that's not the case because each have a probability of one half of being you know either distribution so now you know you, if we restrict the possibility uh, that it's zero say hey it can't be zero then we can make this arbitrarily large in the same fashion. We just let, um, we set mu equal to one of the data points and then let this approach zero but not be in zero, then we can make it arbitrarily large. And so in the case that we restrict sigma squared, then the MLE doesn't exist. And so in both cases, it's sort of the MLE is, is, is not a good approach to use and so that's it so that's the example of the third example and then you say well wait why can't we do this with one of the first two examples that we used and the reason is that our density is actually this product okay where when we are in this case we're, we're only dealing with this here. And so if we let mu be one of the xi's, well, that one term in this sum is zeros, but the rest are non-zero. And then this approaches, you know, it depends which way you're going, sigma go to infinity or sigma go to zero. This one approaches zero much faster than this. And so it, it's zero. And so we can... Uh, get an estimate for sigma squared and uh, mu squared or mu in this case. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Uh, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.